thanks for joining us. We're here at the end of Magic Fest Las Vegas 2019 with Gavin Verhey. He's the Commander Architect for Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, and it's been a blast as the Commander Architect being out here all weekend, seeing all this Commander being played, so many games, just tables full of people playing Commander, and plus the cool new cards came out too, Commander 2019 hit on Friday, so uh, it was fun to see all those out all weekend. Yeah, what great timing. I know, it was perfect, and we had a great Commander party, we'll get into that in a moment, but uh, yeah, lots of Commander being slung this weekend for sure, and it warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> Hard stuff cockles? I think they do. That's the saying, I'm right? certain they do. All right, great. I don't, uh, I'm not a biology major, okay? I don't know these things. <laughs> uh, there might be one or two people tuning in for the first time. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, totally. So my name is Gavin <clears throat> Verhey. I'm a senior product architect and game designer at Wizards of the Coast, yeah. which basically means I make up what a lot of these cards do mm -hmm. and figure out our wide product suite. And in addition to all of those things, one of my main roles is as the commander architect, which means that I do a lot of stuff figuring out what we should be doing in our set releases, helping create things like the Great Command Zone we saw this weekend, and we'll talk plenty about on the show, I'm sure, and all kinds of other wonderful Commander things in the future. So Commander's kind of where my head's at. I'm the Commander guy at Wizards. Yeah, yeah, and we're grateful because it's actually, it's fantastic. Like this set especially, <clears throat> sorry, it's been a long weekend, so I'm a little bit clumped. This set is really playing well. We played it out of the box here at the Command Party. We're actually at the site of the Commander Party. You can't see it, but there's hundreds and hundreds of chairs in one of the largest rooms in uh, the convention center. And um, yeah, we had a, a blast there. They played so well together. What kind, of, what kind of process goes into making sure they play well together? Well, I, Glenn Jones, the lead designer of Commander 2019, yeah. did a ton of work on play testing of, in what we call the biodome. Mm. The biodome is when you play all four decks against each other to try and make sure that they play just right. And uh, he brought in, brought in a lot of different people from Wizards who don't normally play test to get a wide variety of reactions of like, oh, hey, this is how someone who's truly picking this up in the wild and knows nothing about these cards would think and how they would play with these decks. So getting that kind of wide range skill level. In the past, we've had some trouble with decks like, say, the Wizard deck uh, from Commander 2017, where in an experienced player's hands, it's actually incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. But if in a, someone who isn't experienced with the deck, it, it isn't as powerful. And he, so he did a lot of work to get that there. And the flashback deck is a little bit that way this time around. But still, you can kind of pick that one up and learn it faster maybe than the ones of the past. And the second thing he did is, you know, in the past, we tried to get all the decks out about the, about the right power level. Yeah. But something that he did this time that I thought was really good is, instead of aiming for the right power level across all the decks, he aimed for the right power level for these four decks together, which really um, helped, helped mean that sometimes... Let's say that deck A is strong against deck B. Well, if deck B gets knocked out early, early, then deck A is like, oh, no, there's nothing to prey upon. Oh, no, maybe I might fall behind here, right? So it creates a really dynamic things that happen when you're playing with the four decks that you might not, uh, you might play multiple games and have very, very, very different scenarios come up, which I thought he did a great job of. So every deck really has a chance to win. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what, and so as a product architect, do you actually get into the weeds of designing the individual cards anymore? Or are you now just like, we need these themes? I, I do a lot of the, we need these themes. <laughs> but I am always thinking of new card ideas for Commander. Yeah. And so I got a few slipped in. One of my favorites that I finally got printed here was Aeon Engine, the card that reverses the turn order. Uh, I tried getting it into Commander 2017 and failed. And then I wanted to put it in Commander 2018, but had needed to cut it. I ended up putting in... Um, Retrofitter Foundry instead, the card that makes um, Thopters and Servos and mm -hmm. the Constructs. Um, <clears throat> and then this time around, I was finally like, Glenn, Glenn, here's a card. Did you use this one? And it made it on in. And I was very, very glad that it did. Um, yeah. And it's a fun, fun little card. And that's in the deck with Pramacon, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's there. Um, also, um, the idea of doing a, the Weatherlight crew was something that I really wanted to make happen. I, I was pushing Glenn to do a bunch of older characters, and while the individual card designs ended up being more Glenn's, like the idea of doing those old characters really resonated with me, and, and I wanted to make sure that he, he put those in here. That's cool. Yeah, and you maintain a list, I saw. You, or was that just for Twitter, or do you actually have a list? For no, at my desk, I've got a list of legends I want to get printed, and I cross them out after we, we print them, and there's a, it's a long list, so i got a long ways to go. Yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, right, cool. and uh, yeah, I've got my list and my short list, and I try and get through them. Sweet. So, the commander party, and actually the whole thing, like we, um, this is Magic Fest Las Vegas 2019, it's the first time we're seeing uh, the command zone as a place where commander players can come and play, um, and it was, of course, uh, for fees, you know, for a fee, it was like $80 or something, but that didn't slow it down. That was remarkable. How did that come about? 
Well, you know, Channel Fireball came to me, and uh, we meet up at Wizards every now and then and just talk through our upcoming plans. And we talked about Vegas, and I was said, "Hey, I think we should try doing a big commander thing here. We've done big commander things in the past. You know, um, Command Zone has run some stuff off-site, for example, and last year they had like at the big commander championship." And I wanted to try out a new model. And so I worked with our events team, Ben Drago and Aaron Reed, to and Channel Fireball to help make this all happen. And it was really incredible. Um, it's, it's kind of like my baby come to life in that. And we had over 1,000 people this weekend sign up for that command zone. And it's, it's huge. Like, you've seen it. You might see seen pictures online. It's as far as the eye can see, tables just playing commander. And, and it's like a third Grand Prix almost happening here this weekend. Yeah. Um, and just the number of smiles at those tables and the number of, uh, of excited people I got to speak with was astronomical. So I'd say call it a huge success. And in fact, I announced earlier this week, we have added it to every Magic Fest in North America, Europe, and Brazil, starting with uh, Magic Fest Montreal in a couple months uh, wow. for the rest of this year. So you'll be seeing the command zone, not necessarily a thousand seats because, you know, this is a pretty big deal here in Vegas. It's maybe a, a little venue. trunk-shaded yeah. version. But you'll be seeing this and the Solving promo and all that good stuff in future Magic Fest, which I'm really excited about. That's exciting. I so I haven't had time to read that. It, are, are you giving away the foil uh, soul rings again? The promo yep. soul rings? Yeah, those oh, will be there. Those are excellent. Yeah, if you haven't seen one of those yet, it's fantastic. You'll be seeing them soon. And the non-foils too. Get your chance at those right. as well. Yeah, the whole whole piece is beautiful. That was great. And that's a Mark Teddy interview. Yeah, we went back. It was actually Aaron Reed's idea, one of the event uh, team people, to be like, hey, what if we contacted Mark? to do the piece for this. And it's so great to have Mark, who did the original Sol Ring piece, do this, because Mark also shows up to so many of these shows. He's at a lot of Magic Fests, so what's better than going and getting the promo and having him go sign it right away? I mean, that's a, a winner right there. What was the highlight of the show for you? Oh my gosh, there's so many wonderful right? highlights. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to choose just one, frankly, uh -huh. but it really is, and uh, I know it's gonna sound kind of cheesy, but I would just stand in the command zone, and I would just look around, and there were all these people playing this format. I've worked so hard to curate and help create um, in the form that it is now. And like people are just happy and thrilled. And I, literally all I have to do is stand in the command zone and like a magnet. People will run up to me and be like, hey, I've had a great time. Sign my play mat or whatever. And the excitement is just indescribable. So it's been a phenomenal weekend just for that. And I've played so many great games and done wonderful panels and even played in a few side events and seen so many friends to me. Magic is always about the great friends. But um, the success of the command zone is, I think, what I will always, and what many people, frankly, will always remember this Magic Fest for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 2015 that Josh and Jimmy hosted their first commander party. And this is basically like the successor to all of that. Right, right. They're, they're the great grandfathers of yeah. uh, the whole experience. Yeah, and uh, they underestimated it as well. The fire marshal had to stand outside the door and keep people from coming in the very <laughs> first one. So, yeah, you had that moment, and you stand there, and, of course, people come up to all come up to you all the time, but did you have an opportunity before that happened to just turn and look and take a deep breath and just appreciate it? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely took a bunch of pictures on, on my phone too to kind of me take in the memory and also share it back home when people ask how it went. I mean, it's literally like there's a point where most of the tables were full and you just had hundreds of people hundreds. playing Commander, um, hundreds and hundreds of people just playing Commander in one area. Yeah, I've been making point of taking a picture every morning like of the Command Zone just to see all of those orange, all of those orange tables. There are dozens of them. It's far there's bigger than dozens is uh, putting it lightly. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I don't know how many there are, but there's what they're meant to hold four people a piece, and we were set up for a thousand people, right? So, so what's two hundred and fifty? Yeah. I'm glad you can do math. I can't. Mm, I can't do combat math. We proved it this week. At least you have, uh, <laughs> you know, with us, our powers combined, we'll be <laughs> mediocre mathematicians. Yes. Yeah, it was a great show, and thank you for really. Thank you for putting it on. And really, thanks to all the fans. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I might have made this help make this happen, but without this many people showing up, it would have just been nothing. And we would have seen it as a failure and we would have never, never done it again. So the people showing up yeah. is why this was such a big success. Did all the demand starting from last year actually have an impact on this? Like, is, it, is this the result of essentially, you know, the complaint, since I was one of the complainers, that there wasn't enough space for casual play? Yeah, I mean, I took that feedback back, and I know we wanted to find a way to make sure that people could play Commander. It, these things are Magic Fests. They're not just about the main event. They're not just about side That's events. Right. You should be able to come and sit down and play Magic. And um, uh, the fact that there wasn't a way to do that uh, previously, or you might get kicked out if you did that, was, was troublesome. At the same time, I totally understood the reason why, right? Like, well, we only have so many tables. we got to give it to the paying customers instead. So, of course, the solution if you're willing to pay for a little bit of table space, it's yours. Go in and, you know, I think that worked out really well this weekend at uh, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm.
what makes you support the commander community like you do? Well, I think it's just, I mean, frankly, I think it's just the most fun people have playing Magic. Like, when you walk around that command zone, you see so many smiling faces, people making new friends they'll have forever, talking about experiences they'll have forever. It's not being about whether you win or lose. And as someone with a very competitive background, and don't get me wrong, I still love competitive Magic. The thrill, for me, I know this is not necessarily a commander thing, but for the thrill of playing competitively is something that I very, very, very much love. Do not get me wrong. But when you're playing competitively, a lot of the time you look like this. You know, you got like your, your, yeah. you got your furrowed brow. You're like trying to like staring death stares at your opponent because you don't want to give away any emotion. Any emotion is like a is a, yes, a, a tell. tell. And uh, in Commander, it's not about that. You sit down and you might just show someone's in your hand sometimes for fun, right? And you're willing to you know be a little loosey goosey and talk to your friends about it. And um, you know there are a lot of friends I played with this weekend that I got to catch up with them on their lives between turns mm -hmm. because hey, there's four players taking their turns. Sometimes they take a while. And we could just chat. And to me, like it, it is this great casual community. You know, it's like um, Dungeons and Dragons has had so much success recently just because they get to talk and hang out. And Commander is that for Magic. So yeah. um, I, don't get me wrong. I love one-on-one Magic too. I will continue to beat my opponents in one-on-one mag uh, Magic <laughs> all I can. But uh, Commander is something pretty special and something we're worth supporting. Yeah, at least anyone think that uh, that Gavin is a uh, filthy casual, as we like to call ourselves. Uh, he did create the modern format, right? So, what a change it is, though, to go from modern and thinking entirely about competitive and to now uh, considering the social impacts of the cards that you're making for a multiplayer form. I, I like learning a lot of things. So, <laughs> you know, it's fun to wear a lot of different hats and to kind of learn and go through and try a lot of things out. But Commander's really where I'm at right now. I've got a lot of really cool Commander stuff lined up for the next year, and... Uh, can't wait for you to all see what it is. Sweet. Well, before I unintentionally or intentionally start asking more questions, thanks for taking the time today. This is awesome. No, oh, th um, thank you for coming out. Really, it is about the fans. Yeah. And the great content creators like you who tirelessly come out to shows like this and help create content over and over and over again, I mean, it would not be anything without you. So, so thanks a ton to Commander. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you at Magic Fest later this year. Okay, great. Cool.